I don't know if some of you can measure the joy in my heart whenever I see Africans winning, especially young Africans. I get super excited to share things that are being done by young Africans. I feel like the generation of Africans now are very innovative, very creative, and things that they do on the continent is just mind blowing. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, and I'm back again with another mind blowing episode. You know what? Anytime that I bring you guys mind blowing episode, I always ask for a favor. Like this video, it's very important. And don't forget to share, it's by force to share this video. If this video don't get a million views, I'm not uploading my next video because the story that I'm gonna share today very very inspirational she's one of the top recommended list that i ever got since the day i arrived in nigeria she was born in nigeria left to the uk and she decided to come back and be part of the change that we are all looking for i'm not gonna do further introduction because she's here with me and she is gonna introduce herself to you don't forget to subscribe and be part of this awesome family. Let's reach 700,000 subscribers by the end of February. Come with me and enjoy this interesting and inspirational episode from your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana. Baby, I salute. Peace out. Oh my goodness. What's Oh, I thought you were coming to hug me. No, no, we do elbows. Elbows. Oh. Corona Elvis. is not favoring me at all. You know? <laughs> Welcome. How are you doing? I'm so good. Oh my goodness. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for coming to Majors. No, I mean, like, it's a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. It's like everyone is telling me that if I don't meet you, I shouldn't leave Lagos. Oh, that's so oh, sweet. That's so sweet. Oh my <laughs> I wanted to cry, but I don't want to cry. Why not? Shed no, a little men bit of don't cry. Men cry. <laughs> Real men cry. <laughs> you are an inspiration. Oh, thank you. That's so kind of you. You know what? A lot of people are telling me I need to meet you. And I, I was like, who is this girl that everyone is telling me to meet her? <laughs> You're born and raised in Nigeria? Born in Nigeria, but not raised. Went to England at a very young age. So I have oh. no memory of Nigeria whatsoever. Your accent tells it all. Ah. Give me a little bit of the UK accent. This is it. Welcome. In it, in it. In it. No, 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 no. There's no in it in There's this. There's no in it. <laughs> so you went to the UK? Yes. You lived in the UK how long? Uh, 30 years. 30 years in the UK? Yes. What were you doing in the UK? Uh, well, architecture. So I studied architecture, worked within architecture for a number of years, and then switched over to furniture. Um, I started sort of playing around with furniture as a hobby. 20, I think 2010, 2011, the peak of recession in the UK. And I, I just wasn't getting the type of jobs within firms that I wanted. And I just started playing with furniture at home, and then it just kind of, I don't know, blew up, I suppose. So here I am. I mean. UK, it blowed up in the UK. Yes. Why do you have to come back to the motherland? Ah, the peak of enjoyment, Wade. <laughs> the peak of enjoyment? Yes, if you want a good life, you should be in, you should be in Africa. Huh. So I'm, I'm doing the same thing I was doing in the UK, but I'm doing it in Nigeria, but I'm making more of an impact here, so why not? The moment I heard I could make an impact in Nigeria, I came over there, I came here, I saw it myself, I saw the people, I fell in love with my own people, and I've been here ever since, and that was 2016. And what are you doing in Nigeria right we are now? We're building an empire. Shall I show you? Wow. Building <laughs> an empire. We go this way or this way? Let's start right here. So this area here is our carpentry section. This is where all the messy work is done. So where we're cutting wood, why my guys are sort of doing all the machinery work. Um, so we do a lot of hard wood, hard wood um, within Majors. No, let me, let, let me understand something. You, you told me that you're building an empire. Yes. This is, is this an empire? We haven't started, we just started. We haven't quite got there yet, but we're no, in no, the... No, 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 what, what kind of <laughs> empire are you building? So we're trying to build a homemade, homegrown furniture manufacturing company here within Nigeria to serve a whole of the African market. So we're talking Pan-African By Nigerians? For Why Africans. Nigerians for, for Africans, precisely. And you know we have the numbers, so we can do it, right? Exactly. Yeah, so we started. This so is us and our process and our elements. You, you mean everything is made in Nigeria? Everything we do, you all our end products. raw materials from Nigeria. Source all our raw materials the within people Nigeria. The the finished products now, are from Nigeria. Now, the raw, the raw materials that we source in Nigeria is our core, which is our wood, our foam. Um, 
some materials, fabrics. We know we don't really manufacture fabrics within Nigeria, except from the local ones. Mm. So the majority of fabrics that we use are imported anyway. So we do bring in a lot of raw materials. We bring in, um, we, we source a lot of raw materials within Nigeria. We bring in a lot of finished materials into Nigeria in order to do all our finishing work. But we are making everything within Nigeria, and I'm going to show you today. But I, I, I just wanted to know why you decided to make everything in Nigeria. You could have import whatever you're doing in the UK back in it's here. It's easier, but it doesn't it doesn't bring me the same level of joy of doing it myself and basically proving that we can actually create great products within a Nigerian market. Everybody's very skeptical until they see what we do. Can I tell you that you've been part? of the solution or the change that we're looking for the continent. Do you know continent. what? That's such a huge compliment coming from you. I'm so flattered. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i telling people that it's time to make everything in Africa. We have the resources. And if people are coming in here to take our resources, to go and use them in their own countries and create finished products, why can't we do it? I mean, Nigeria is the country that everyone is talking bad about, including Nigerians. Yes. But you never gave up on Nigeria. Why? Why on earth did I give up on Nigeria? I'm Nigerian. I'm, I'm proudly Nigerian. And you know, although I didn't grow up here, I didn't have the experience of Nigeria as you know the average Nigerian does. But the moment I came here to explore it as an adult, because I didn't really grow up here as a child, as an adult, I realized that, you know what? There is, there is an essence here that we're missing in the West. There is a homecoming that I felt when I came here, um, fall in love with the people. And, and I, it's not that I'm blind to the chaos. I see the mess. I see, I see where we lack, but I also see a huge potential. So I took my time, I made my very first sample using locals. It was difficult, but we got there in the end. And the product was beautiful, we sold it, and here we are today. We now have a team of 30-something people, and it's... <laughs> it's so sweet. <laughs> Man, it's like, you're doing something that I wish a lot of Africans can get involved. You know what, I don't even want you to take me around. You know what, I'll let you take me around, but let's do this. If you're watching this video, pause this video. There is a share button. Share this video. Let yes. a lot of young Africans get a piece of this video. I mean, this video alone should make more impact than I am looking for. <laughs> yes, that's right, share. They have to share. You must share. It's very important who, that we share who, who our Who are the people working for you in here? All right, so we have our... This is our carpenters in this section here. So if we just kind of show you something, what they do, we, like I said earlier, we do a lot of hard wood. Um, so we pretty much, Nigeria has beautiful wood. Mm. Um, some of the issues we have is drying the wood, preparing it for finishes and, and working like this. And if you look across the yard, we actually have a wood dryer where we yeah. dry our wood to make sure that the, the wood itself is in proper working and, and building condition. So it makes sure that our wood is solidified and it's ready to be worked on and we have a, a beautiful finished product that is not going to crack over time so we take the time to make sure we do that Who so here the stuff in here oh the older stuff oh my god so I did a video a while ago okay um, and I introduced our older stuff and our older stuff is actually Baba who's working on this piece oh, right okay. here Baba would you like to come and say hi Baba <laughs> hi <laughs> Good afternoon, Baba. <laughs> are you Iroba? I speak Iroba, so I don't know if you're Iroba or Ibo. I'm Iroba. Iroba. Oh, um, Kilo Shele. <laughs> I hope I'm messing around. No, uh, I'm messing around. Ah. <laughs> I, I know Kilo Day. You know, my mom was based in Nigeria. My mom oh, and dad. Oh, she was? Yeah, so my oh, mom wow. speaks Iroba fluently interesting yeah so it's good to reconnect back here yeah, my mom's favorite food was ewagonye I, I'm, I'm i don't i don't blame <laughs> you know, you her know still... right? of course he does ewagonye. Ewagonye. Bread. Yes. yeah my mom used to sell that here in wow. lagos very interesting Baba, so, so how old is he Baba, do you want to tell us your age mm, I was, yeah i'm 42. is <laughs> actually older than my own father that's like 70 Seven or seventy-six? Yes. About 70, seventy-six. Seventy-six years. Yeah, thereabouts. Wow. We haven't done the calculations, but thereabouts. Yes. Yeah. But but, please, I, I I really want to ask this question. How did he get here? Baba actually found us. So we actually left a we left an advert outside of the gate. We were looking for workers, and Baba knocked on the gate and he said that he's a carpenter. Would we be willing to give him a job? Um, and we you know we gave him a couple of tests because mm. obviously we were very concerned mm. about his age, but we wanted to help. So we gave him a job and he's actually one of our best carpenters because he comes from a generation where the training was 
was fantastic. Can you do this for me? The youngest staff in here, it's me. <laughs> Not quite, Wade. the youngest staff in so here. So our youngest staff, Baba I've been the oldest at 76. Our mm. youngest staff, I believe, is 17 years old. Um, and he's not really a staff, he's more of an apprentice. So in the local area, we're quite connected with our with our locals. They know us, we know them, you know, they're, they're very lovely. Okay. So a lot of them tend to send their children to us because where we are is a little bit rough. Um, and a lot of them are quite concerned about their children, sort of out of school hours, what they get up to. Um, so we actually have a young boy who his mother sent, or his father and mother sent him here. And um, we have a forwarding letter asking that we can train him what, after school hours. So he comes for like two hours um, after school and he just learns how to sew and things like that. And we kind of just take care of him. He's the baby of the now, group. Now I'll say that I know why everyone was telling me to meet him. <laughs> well, where do we go from here? All right, so here is our upholstery section. This is where we do the majority of the covering of the chairs where our machines are pretty much sewing, our guys are tacking, our guys are dressing and doing all the finishes. Um, all right, so upholstery, reupholstery is, is one of, definitely one of those things that we do quite a lot in Nigeria. Okay. People's furniture that needs sort of revamping. I, I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah, do you train these people or they need a work already? Now we do a combination. So I'm I'm trained in furniture restoration and and sort of finishes and leathers like that. Now we hire. Um, a combination of people who have furniture experience and then we also hire apprentices that we train up but all our staff as a unit are constantly trained to improve because again I have certain skills that I can teach them because I've, I've gone through that training course myself. Are uh, Nigerians patronizing made in Nigeria furniture? Yes they are they are they are so what we do majority at, at Majors majorly is we do fine colouring work. So we actually colour our own leathers. So what Ramon is doing here basically is he is antiquing our aniline leather. If I can show you a before and after of what he's doing. So, you know, like I mentioned that I come, I come from a, a restoration background. So, and re restoring antiques um, in, you know, in, nine, in, in England. Oh, okay. So this is what the leather looked like right. before in its raw form. And then we distress it and make it look like an antiqued piece. So oh, it makes okay. it look like an heirloom, something much older, with more you character. You have to employ me, you know? <laughs> I think I can do this. Yeah, go for it. Do a little colouring there, just... No, don't be scared. Lighting, man. Yeah, rub it in there. You oh, wanna, okay, you wanna? Rub it, rub yes, it. like you're ah. like you're applying body lotion, just oh, okay. circular, circular, okay. onto the leather absorbs all of that colour in there. Add a little bit more. Don't be scared. You want dip, dip, dip? Using this. Oh, no, it's fine. Let's use the red. Let's oh, use the red. Using the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> no, let him use the black. All right. I mean, if you use the red and then just do your dip into this one a little bit too. Don't be scared. Let it fill it up. Let it soak and then just go circular, circular. I don't circular. want to ruin your business. You, you can't ruin. <laughs> look at that. Look at that gorgeous oh, okay. colour coming through. Yes? Yeah, so made in Nigeria by Wadamaya. So <laughs> it's by force to each and everyone to purchase one of this. I made it. You have a new job. <laughs> <laughs> you <can start> <laughs> we'll hire oh, you. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. That's a lot of hard work, bro. I'm, I'm sweating already. A lot of patience, <laughs> a lot of patience. <laughs> so what, what they do right here, they're tacking. So we use... Um, the sort of metal mechanisms at the end of the chairs just to do the finishing. This is a custom piece. Mm. So if you have a look at it, we've put the, the, the owner's initials on the back of the chair so that when they tack it down, it's a personalized piece with the initials all at the back and okay. tacked down. This is a basically an office chair, an antique office chair, personalized for the owner. Amazing. Yeah. And then from this part, do you have any other stage that you have to do before? Yes, yeah, so let me show the... you. Let me show you one of our finished products here. Oh, okay. Hi. So this is. Um, no, we're called Majors Chesterfield. So this is one of our signature designs. Oh. Our, <laughs> our fewer Chesterfield sofa. So we love button work. It's one of the things we specialize in. And you see a lot of our designs, although we do a lot of contemporary pieces, wow. we like to infuse a lot of buttons in our designs. So you always see tech, you always see really te techy pieces like this. We have a lot of just detail mm. and things in it. it Is it comfy? Very comfy? Sit back and relax. I'm already relaxing. I'm already relaxing. You're not supposed to be relaxing. You've got a new job. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, where am I going now? Yes, yeah, so I'll show you through the back where we do a little bit of our of our little spraying. But before we get there, let me just show you how we button pieces like that here. So this apprentice here is basically going through the buttoning process. 
So he basically cuts the pieces of leather into little circular piece, pieces like that. He then feeds the leather into this little tool here. And then he places our little, the back end of the button. Go, go ahead, show us how you do it. And then he pretty much clamps everything together. This is actually our, our youngest apprentice. Oh, okay. Oh. So he just puts a little elbow grease into that and voila, you have a finished button. Strong, solid, to be pulled into one of the pieces we've just sat on. Nice one. <laughs> Fantastic. So now I'll show you our spraying area just through the back. So here we have the spray department. So this okay. is where we do all the spraying work. Wow. Um, so here they've already done the, the base color one of this piece. So now all they're simply doing is they're going over to check over for imperfections here and there, sanding it all down, doing the finishing touches so they can apply the final coat of stain onto this piece. Everything is done in Nigeria. This is Nigerian wood, hand carved, all made 100% in Nigeria, yes. By Nigerians. I, I, I'm still wondering what is your source of inspiration? I love taking raw materials and seeing how we can transform into beautiful products for people um, that people enjoy, people can use. Uh, I think that's just the architect in me coming through, um, just creating things from scratch and then just seeing how human beings can actually create beautiful products. I mean, after being here, don't you think you need to expand? We are. We're absolutely going Already? to expand. Yes. So what we, one of the things we've been doing throughout our whole journey in Nigeria so far is we've been training people and retraining people. Okay. We're actually now expanding to basically open up a training academy for furniture manufacturing and furniture making within Nigeria. And who are the people that are well, going to be in the academy? Well, have, I actually have two of our female students oh, okay. here that can join us and come and tell us a little bit about it. Come on, girls. Oh, they're female. They're women, yes. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> Hi. You want to be a carpenter? Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> Why do you want to be a carpenter? Because I have passion for carpentry. I love, I love creativity. I love designs. I love everything furniture. Oh, okay. So she inspired you to be a carpenter or something? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> The school, when is the school starting? Well, we've already pretty much started um, getting all our accreditations in place. Uh, so by this year, school here? no, we have a new location for that. Oh, really? Yes, that's why one of the main reasons we need to expand will as a company. Will you take me there? Absolutely. All right, Rodri, welcome to our new location. Wow. This is the new uh, premises. This is where you'll be relocating to. This is what we're going to be relocating hold on, to. Hold on. How did you start? How did we start? We start with a hole in the wall. I actually did a video on my YouTube channel. A hole in the wall and two local carpenters. And we have been growing gradually and steadily ever since. How many years so far? Three and a half. This is, we're now approaching the fourth year. You mean you moved to Africa by yourself? Yes, by myself. My Your family parents? is still. My parents are still in the UK. They didn't come with you? No, they did Your not. Your husband? <laughs> well, <laughs> What's that laughter for? Let's move on, I beg. <laughs> no, I can also laugh with you. <laughs> anyway, right. what you've done is really inspirational. We've and I worked just hard. Say We've worked hard. Congratulations. Thank you, but it hasn't just been me. I have had, I've had the opportunity to grow a very good team, mm. and we're constantly growing our team. We're now on about 30 men and women. Okay. Um, by the time we move to this location, we're looking to expand that, hire more people, train more people, and make more wonderful furniture. That would be amazing. I think the entire Africa needs to buy furniture from you. They do. But this place looks very huge. I mean, what is going to go on in here? All right, so it's considerably bigger than where we're coming from at the moment. So okay. in our current location, you saw a carpentry area. Mm. So we're going to basically transform that, transform this space into that Probably. carpentry area, something slightly bigger. So we're going to be building on this particular spot here. And then we have the upholstery area, which we're going to use this long building here for, um, so that we can keep our upholstery under wraps, under control, very neat, um, yeah, away from all the dust and all the mess. And this place? Now, this is what I mentioned to you earlier, the Academy, Majors Academy oh, okay. for our young people in Africa who want to learn furniture making as a skill set. 
we have a three-year course that we're basically offering those students mm. and then we have a longer term five-year course where they learn mastery of upholstery and carpentry work there's this question this i wanted to ask you but i don't think it's necessary for me to ask you what's that do you regret moving to nigeria never <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible what <laughs> regret i just got here and i'm here to stay we have a long way to go and I'm very excited about that we journey. We have more Africans that looks like you yes. who don't want to come back to Oh, no, 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 they'll come. We're working on it. You and I both, we're working on it. So the more we tell these stories, and I always say there's so much power in our stories. Mm. The more we tell these stories, the more we show them how we are doing it. Because as impossible as it may seem, it's actually very possible. We are doing it. We're facing the trials and tribulations every day. But two steps, was it two steps forward or two steps back? Two steps forward. What, two, one step forward, two steps back, but either way, we're still moving forward, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, you don't sound like you had any challenge when you started oh, this business. Oh, no. I still have challenges till today. Today, our biggest challenge really is about funding. You know, as, as, as a small business, we're constantly um, struggling in ways that other businesses in the West are possibly not struggling because they have access to, to funding. Within Africa, we simply are just struggling with that. So really for us, it's just always looking for opportunities for funding and looking for opportunities for investors to help us just get that growth spur that we desperately need. Uh, let, let me understand. Are you looking for investors right now? Yes, of course we're looking for investors. We're, we're a small scale business that's really trying to make a difference. So definitely an investor coming on board will make a world of a difference for us. Your final message for Africans watching us right now? Um, come home. Oh, that's messages for Africans abroad, eh? Africans abroad and Africans here, start pet patronizing your local businesses. People are really doing wonderful work and without your support we simply cannot grow. Patronize, look inwards, those who are still in the diaspora, mm. who are thinking it's not possible to come home and mm. do something wonderful. Listen, I grew up my entire life in England. I had no experience of Africa and I'm doing it. It's a challenge, but where isn't, where isn't a challenge? Everywhere we're facing challenges, it's just a different set of challenges everywhere mm. we go. But when you, when you do for yourself, they say charity begins at, at home. home. Come and do your charity at home. Bring Come. your money home. Oh my goodness. Bring your money home. <laughs> Bring your money home. And keep, those of you who are already here, keep, keep your them. money home. We need it. What is your name once again? <laughs> Demi Samande. So, Demi Samande, I need to patent this. Bring your money home. And those Africans that have the money in here, keep your money, money home. home in Africa. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you so Where much for having me. Where do we find you? Go on YouTube. You've got my Instagram, Demi Samande. Go on YouTube, Demi Samande. Make sure you guys follow. We're doing some great work. You know, on my particular channel, we talk about um, the, the, the process in which I've taken in business. Mm. I document that whole process for you. If you want to know more, watch my videos, my vlogs, my advice videos. And we also cover um, stories from other entrepreneurs who are doing great things within mm, Africa. Cool. They tell their story, they talk about their challenges, and together we move forward. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe and help us reach 700,000 subscribers. The favorite village boy, Mr. Gada, baby. <laughs> and I'll see you in another one. Peace out. Bye, guys.